okay in our previous video we talked about the basic stuff about the modular input right so we get an idea about what modular input is and what is the difference between a modular input and a scripted input and we while doing that we talked about this tmdb modular input app we are trying to build right now over there we talked about this this whole skeleton we developed it over there and we talked about the gate scheme the validated input and the stream event why this methods we need to override correct now in this video we will be working on this gate scheme which is nothing but the ui portion of the modular input over there okay so let's do that one so before we do that let's see what what are the different inputs we will be taking it from the user so if we just go back to our tmdb api so if you remember for the tmdb scripted input we were working on this particular api right upcoming movies and that time we only passed the api key over there correct so now that particular endpoints also accept some optional arguments like the language page number region as well okay so let's let's in our modular input let's take all this four arguments now okay but among them only the api key will be the required one and rest of the stuff will be optional okay so that means if we do not provide any value over there we will be basically handling some way so that we will be basically for language it will be en us so all the default values we will be taking it okay so so to create an input for a modular input basically so this scheme we need to first do one thing is if you if i just go back to the documentation of this plunk lib dot modular input package over there if you see in the script class we have this get underscore scheme method right which basically returns a scheme object correct it basically represents a scheme object now if i just search through this documentation the scheme object so this is the scheme class basically okay so this first we need to create an object of this class and basically the gets from the get scheme we need to return this particular object as well now the scheme class actually takes an argument called title which is basically identifies the scheme okay and that will be displayed in the ui as well so let us do that one so if i just go back over here so we will be creating a scheme class object first so we will be writing something like this one c h e m e scheme i'll just create a variable over here now this is the class name correct capital s now over there as i said we are having a title so this title will be basically appear over here so if i just go back to the settings data inputs page okay over here this guy will be applied over here so basically appear over here so if i just give it a name something like let's say t m d b modular some string you can give any string over here modular input i'll just give some name okay so this is our scheme object now there are two very important properties of the scheme object you need to remember the first thing is the external validation okay use external validation if you see it over here okay it is coming up over here now either you need to make it as true or false so that means if you want to do some kind of validations over here so which is which will basically implement in the validated input you have to make it as true otherwise you need to make it as false okay so let's make it as false for now okay if we come up with some idea about validate input we will be implementing that one otherwise we may not be implementing this one now another thing which is very much important is scheme dot use single instance okay so this is very much important now let us talk about this one so if i just open my notepad now what do we mean by single instance and the multiple instance okay now let's say in our inputs dot con file okay so this is our inputs dot con file we'll be having multiple stanzas multiple inputs for different different inputs over here let's say this is this is input one input one this is input two 
and this is input three this is our standard name and we will be having different key val pairs over here right just just for a sake of understanding we will be doing this one so input two and some input three as well correct it may have like for we have three different servers and we can we'll having three different inputs for the three different servers over here now in the single instance mode what will happen is you will be having so you will be we are basically create creating a python script over here correct so in a single single instance mode we will be having a single instance of the python script single instance okay of py python script that means in your python script itself you need to add the logic to handle all these inputs over here okay that is one thing but when you talk about multiple instance multiple instance mode okay so over here what happens is you will be having a separate instance for each and every stanza separate separate instance for each stanza each stanza each stanza over here that means so you'll be having a separate instance of the py file for this guy separate instance for the py file for this guy as well okay and for separate instance for this guy as well that means basically you are achieving a multi-threading mode over here okay so that's the difference between a single instance mode and the multiple instance mode in the modular input okay so for our case it may happen that we want to create multiple input something like for for one input for english language movies another in for input for french language movies right so we will be keeping our single instance mode as false as well over here okay so that is the two stuff and if you want to achieve the single instance mode you need to make it basically make it as true okay now another thing you can set for scheme is description okay scheme dot description as well so you can set some kind of meaningful description over here okay i'll just give this guy as well i do not want to make things complicated okay so so this is our scheme object and its related properties okay so if if you are fine with these things if you understand these things i think most of the scheme related object settings are done now we need to create those four stuff over here right input for basically we need to create text boxes for api key language page and region over here correct so this is how we will be doing it again i will go back to this documentation over here now there is a class i think this is the first one there is a class called argument over here so which basically creates those inputs over there okay and if you see it it has a lot of parameters like the name description validation data type required on edit required on create and title okay and if you see it over here for the argument we have two things called name and the title the name is something like where in the splunk program we will be accessing the arguments with the name okay and the title is actually for the ui purpose it will be displayed in the ui over there okay so this is how we will be creating an argument so let's name the first argument let's create the first argument called api underscore key so we'll create a variable called api underscore key okay now the class name is argument so we need to create an object of this class so and let's give it a name first that's the that's the one thing you need to give it over here let's say api underscore key so we are basically passing the name parameter over here now we can set the other details over here okay so that means as api key is the variable the argument object name over here so we can give its title correct so let's give it a title this which will be displayed in the ui that means api key i'll be giving it okay now we have the data type as well if you if we just go back to this one 
the data type has to be string for us because it is an API key, right? So the class name is data type string. Okay, so let us give that one. So I'll write API key dot data type. Okay, so this will be our if I just go back data type data underscore type underscore string over here. Correct. So we will give that. Now we need to have other details as well. Like you can give a description as well as we can see it over here. So let us set that. So API key dot description equals to let's give a meaningful description API key. Now this two are important API key dot required on create and another thing another thing we have is api key dot required on edit okay so that means if we just make it as true so what will be happening so this will become a mandatory argument okay and even for edit also if we just make it as true that means if you edit an existing inputs or input over there if you do not provide the value for this particular field it will not allow you to save okay so that's just two stuff over here so so once we set the properties of this guy okay so what we need to do it over here is we need to add this particular argument to this scheme over here okay so if i just go back to the documentation and if i just go back to the scheme class over here so it has a method called add underscore argument so it basically takes an argument object okay so which we will be using it over here so we will write something like this one s c h e m e scheme dot add argument okay and what is the argument we are just we have just created api key okay so that's so we have basically added this particular argument to the scheme. So behind the scene, what happens is it basically creates an XML kind of structure over here. So if you want to develop the modular input without using this Python SDK, so all those XML structure creation, you need to handle in your code as well. Okay, which maybe we will see it in future videos as well. Now, we just created a single argument, the similar way we need to create other arguments as well. Okay, but this statement is important when you are done creating all these arguments over here you have to remember to return this scheme because this is the only stuff splunk will be reading it over here okay now for other methods let's not provide anything let's keep it as is we wanted to see how the ui looks like okay so now let's create a let, let's create other arguments over here as well. Okay, for the data type string, it has to be argument class dot data type. It's a property of the, it's basically part of this argument class over here. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll just copy this guy and I will API key, I'll change it to language. Okay. So this one will be lang. So let's replace this guy so i'll just quickly do stuff okay now if you see for the language as it is an optional argument so i will make it as false over here required on create is false and required on edit is false as well okay so this this is the change from this api key over here and then i have to add this language as well to our scheme individually okay Similarly, for page number as well, I'll just quickly do it. Now for the page number, as it is an integer, so if I just go back over here, so in the argument class, we have a data type number, okay? So you will be giving that one over here. And then we will be adding this page number as well to our scheme, right? So similarly, let's do it for the region as well. So similarly, we will be adding this region as well to our scheme over here, okay? 
So if hopefully we create it correctly over here. Otherwise, we will see what error we are getting it over there. So we created this this four arguments over here. Now let's try to see how it is coming up in the UI. Okay, there is this, there is one error which I wanted to show you how to check over there in the, when you are doing something wrong in your modular input code over there. Okay, so let's try to restart Splunk and then see what kind of error we are getting it over there. So I'll go to settings, server controls and restart Splunk. Okay, we'll come back after Splunk restart completed. So our Splunk restart has been done. Let's go to this login over there. Now, now if you see it over here, ign ignore this, this, this one over here, but it, it gives us a error message called unable to initialize modular input, this one. And it is saying endpoint argument API key has not been defined in the inputs.conf.spec file. Okay. So it is complaining about the inputs.com.spec file, which we have not set it. Okay. Now the same message, the same message, you can get it from here as well. If you remember in the troubleshooting video, we talked about the similar stuff. So if I just go to index equals to internal and let's do it for last 15 minutes, because not always you will be getting the exact error message over here. Sometimes it, it may just give you unable to initialize modular input. It failed with error code one. Okay, because maybe you will have some error in the, your Python code. Okay, so in that case, you need to come over here, index equals to underscore internal. Then in the component, if you remember, we talked about the modular inputs, right? And if we just give the modular input name, our tmdb underscore modular underscore input, the exact script name, we are running it over here. Okay, so you will come to know what exactly the error coming up over here. Okay, if it is a Python error, error it should be shown up over here as well. Okay, so as it is complaining about inputs.conf.spec, so let us add those stuff over there. Okay, now in the inputs.conf.spec, so this particular file exists in the readme folder, if you remember from the previous video, right? So we'll, we'll just, because we, if you remember, we we copied this one, I think from, from a GitHub codes, right? So we need to keep our own values over here, at least the names. Now, what, what name you'll be giving it over here? It is the name value of the particular argument. Okay. That means I'll be copying it from here. API underscore key equals to, let's say some value, some value will be coming up over here. Okay. So you can write something like this one. Similarly, I'll just, as we have four arguments, so I'll just create those four lines first. Okay, then I'll just copy one by one. Then we will be having control C. So we will be having language, correct. We will be having page number and we will be having the region as well over there, correct? So this is very much important. If you remember, I was talking about the same stuff. This inputs.conf.spec should be having all these names of this parameter, input parameter over there, okay? Whatever argument object you are creating it over there, okay? So let's restart Splunk again and see whether this particular error is gone or not. We'll come back after Splunk restart completed. So our Splunk has been restarted. Looks like the error is gone now. Let's go to settings and data inputs and see whether our TMDB is appearing over here or not. And if you see it, it is getting appeared over here with the same name and the description we have provided in our code over here, correct? The name and the description over here. And if I just go inside it, it will allow me to create a new input from here, correct? So if I just click on the new, if you see it, it is asking me all the different inputs we have created over here. Also, it, 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 it will ask you to give a name, okay, which is always mandatory. That means if you do not provide any other inputs, this name will always be appear over here. Okay, so that means you can create a name input, then API key. And if you see wherever we have mentioned the required on create is true, it is actually providing a star over there after that name over there as well. Okay. And this stuff over here. Okay. So this is how Splunk will be rendering those inputs, those arguments basically for your modular input. 
in in the settings data inputs page okay now in the next video let's work on implementing the main logic basically getting the data from the ui using this particular input values okay see you in the next video